And here we go. Welcome to the Great Work Insights Podcast by the OC Tanner Institute, the show that features the people, the professionals, the thought leaders, and the coolest companies. And now your host, the man navigating the discussion about the culture, the organized chaos, and the best practices that compel great work, Todd Nordstrom. Okay, listen to my morning. I want uh, you to tell me if I'm complaining. Tell me if I'm making excuses or if I'm, well, maybe I'm actually being rational. Ready? By the way, I was up until 2.30 working late last night, so just keep that in perspective as I speak here. So I woke up at 7.22 to feed my youngest child breakfast. He's eight. His sisters could have made him breakfast. They're both in middle school, but of course they didn't. My wife was gone at work already, so breakfast it is, because if I don't make it for him, he'll eat pretzels or or something just wrong for breakfast. Next, I walk my son to the bus stop. On the way back, I jump on a two-hour conference call. After that, I respond to 27 emails. The next thing I know, my wife is calling me to tell me that my oldest child has to be at the orthodontist at 2 p.m. That's only an hour and a half away. I need to take a shower. I need to fill out my... Does any of this sound familiar? We get busy. Um, Am I complaining? I, it, it may sound like I'm complaining, but many of you listening could actually, you know, have a busier day than I just told you about, and I didn't even get through my whole day. Um, this is the world we live in. The question is, is being really, really busy healthy, and how can I focus on my health when I'm this busy? Today, our guest can answer the question and give us some insights that can help. She understands the obstacles and time pressures that can stand in the way of being our best. As a healthy living expert, a Boston Marathon finisher, and a natural bodybuilding champion at age 50, Jen Arakali's Foundation for Success focuses on food and fitness, but it doesn't stop there. As a 20-year executive in corporate America, Jen offers simple, real solutions that apply to many aspects of any business or busy person's life. Jen, welcome to the show today. Hi, Todd. Thanks for having me, and thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just trying to keep my head on straight. I want to start the the conversation today by saying that um, you're not my typical guest on this show. Most of the listeners are here because we often talk about work, we talk about success, we talk about achievement, leadership, and the list can go on. But when I heard about your approach to to busy lifestyles and, and health, I thought it was brilliant because your approach to health is to attack the primary reason most of us aren't better at becoming healthy. We're not lazy, we're, we're busy. Is that is that the reason? Am I wrong? You know, um, you're not wrong, Todd, I don't believe, but I think it's it's really a lot about perspective because most people are busy. Anyone who works for a living, anyone who has a family, friends, a life, is uh, they find themselves being very busy at some times in their life more than others. Mm-hmm. What changes, though, is, you know, our perspective. And, and what's kind of neat, I like how you said I'm, I'm different than your typical guest, you know, being a, an executive for many, many years, I think that's my connection point that's kind of unique is I understand the life of working in an office, traveling, having a family, juggling things, not having tons of money to have people do things for you. So the universe, it's a universal desire to be healthy. And that I think is kind of a starting point, no matter where people are in their life, in their health journey. I, I challenge you to find someone who says they don't want to be healthier. Okay. So and most people know what to do. They just don't know how to do it. So while I'm not going to call that lazy, mm-hmm. I'm going to call that a, they just need a little more accountability, a little more information that they can actually do something with. You know, none of this theory, none of these crazy headlines. So it's not lazy. It's just information, awareness, commitment, and uh, priority. I like how you said it. it's a universal desire to want to be healthy, but I, 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 I almost guarantee you right now is that there's still a lot of people listening to this and they say, of course I want to be healthy, I, but they're saying, I just don't have time, and, and really, is this a conversation about just feeling good, or, or does health actually impact your work? How much does health impact work? Oh, greatly. In fact, uh, it goes both ways, right? Your health impacts work. 
and work in, impacts your health. It's very symbiotic. But at the same time, you know, and because of they're so interconnected, that's actually why one of my most popular workshops, Healthy Business, Healthy Life, that I do with my uh, my partner and my husband, Sheldon Harris, who you know, mm-hmm. uh, we do this together. He's the leadership expert, and I am the busy executive health expert. And together, we teach people how much what they're doing. We typically focus with leaders of companies and, and forums and large groups. It starts at the top, okay? So you need a healthy leader, a healthy owner, a healthy um, leadership group. And just to give you an idea how much health does impact work, there's, you know, all sorts of studies out there, but one of my one of my favorite ones is by the Institute of Healthcare Consumerism. And they they just very simple and it makes sense. They say with increasing health issues, many, many companies, their health costs are up to fifty percent of their total corporate profits. Uh-huh. Many American companies. And even more shocking, when you put a dollar amount on the cost of absenteeism and decreased productivity, which we know is a result of mm-hmm. not showing up at work healthy, that is two to three times the actual medical cost. So you're you're talking a four times factor cost to companies for not having people be their healthiest selves at work. Wow. Wow, that's that's huge. Okay, so let's let's dig into this um for a second. I, I would guess that that um, if if we ask most of the people listening to this why why they eat per- poorly or don't exercise, most would say something to the effect of I just I don't have time to make my own lunch. I have to grab on the go, things like that, or I don't have time to get to the gym. And if that's true, which it could be, um, it, it it could very well be that way. That would also mean we probably don't have time for other things as well, right? I mean, is this all about prioritizing? You know, it's not just prioritizing. It's a little bit of that, but here's the good news, and this this is only a secret until people hear me say this, then it's not a secret anymore. My secret to success for you with being your healthiest self is not not going to be about telling you to deprive yourself of anything. It's about telling you what to do more of. Very simple tips that are in my booklets, my emails, my presentations, my work plans that I create for organizations and companies. These are simple checklist things that become habits like brushing our teeth, and I'm not exaggerating. They're nothing dramatic, nothing expensive, nothing out of the norm. It's just an awareness, mm-hmm. an awareness of what we need to do every day, even on our work day, because I'm not going to tell you what not to do, but I'm going to tell you even when you're going off the wagon, there's certain things you can do to be your healthiest self. That's interesting. It, it's interesting, too, when you when you compare, like you just said, what I'm going to tell you to do. Um, and when you look at like what a manager or a leader's role is in the workplace, you know, where they're saying work, 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 work. Is it the manager or leader's role to also tell their people, hey, take care of yourself? Absolutely. You know, I mean, we know in business and as, as business leaders, entrepreneurs, executives, we understand the impact of, of a company culture, and that goes just as much with wellness. And I like to call it a wellness culture. I think everyone should have a wellness culture. Some organizations spend lots of money to bring uh, programs and experts and tools in, but what I'm here to tell you is there's a way to do it at a very low-cost level where you can actually start doing things today. It doesn't have to be perfect. Most of the people on your program are probably like me, a type A, who likes to have everything done perfectly and fully. Well, we all know perfection is the enemy of greatness, right? Mm-hmm. And this area is no different. Another reason what you said is so true, Todd, um, is that, you know, think about it. Most American adults spend more than half their waking hours at work. Yeah. Think about what an influence the workplace is. You yeah. know, we all talk about, oh, you know, the people around me don't understand. I'm trying to be healthy. Well, if you can just be healthy at work alone, you're already at more than half your waking hours. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's interesting to think about. You know, and a, and a lot of people, I think too, uh, um, they get scared when when they when when you talk about wellness, whether you're a, a an employee or a manager, and and managers might say, "Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go tell my employees what they can't eat or that they can't smoke or that they can't do this." And it's not about that, is it? Isn't it more just saying, "Hey, you know what? Get up and stretch. Take a take a short walk around the building. That kind of stuff." Exactly. I mean, you're right. There's, there's definitely, uh, you know, legally and also just um, from a human perspective, it's, it's not our business to be telling people what they should and shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we can create by example and by positive reinforcement. Um, and it's not going to work for everybody, but for the majority, people want to be healthy and they want to belong and they don't want to be pressured, but they'll come along in their own time. And so there's plenty of tools and resources and checklists and like I, I have these little magnets that have five healthy eating tips that anyone can do throw it on their cubicle you know their little magnetic cubicle mm -hmm. we've, we've got these booklets that have reminders in front of them so things that people can can digest and incorporate at their own pace but the number one place you can start making an impact if you have a business is in your lunchroom and your break room I mean for heaven's sake you know don't don't be offering you know, candy in the break room and you can be offering much healthier things. I mean, we don't want to contradict ourselves, right? Absolutely. So it's, it's things like that. Jen, I, I know you speak and consult with companies and, and, and people all the time. Is there a is there a story that sticks out in your mind about a person who maybe or, or a team that, that changed their life or witnessed a huge benefit from either getting healthier or just being not so busy that they couldn't accomplish the things they truly wanted to do? You know, um, that's great. There's there's actually a lot of stories, um, but there's a very common theme that I see over and over, and it, and it varies from individuals to huge, large conglomerates to, you know, just small startups where everyone's working kind of crazy hours. Some of the techniques I shared with these people, um, and even like in YPO forms where you've got diverse businesses, you know, everyone there is from a different organization. Mm -hmm. When we go over some of the things that you can do every day, no matter what, um, and, and my analogy to them about it being like you're brushing your teeth, you know, I would start out my presentations with, you know, who here brushes their teeth every day? And, of course, everyone raises their hand. You get a few wise guys who go, today, including today, you know, but um, <laughs> everyone pretty much brushes their teeth every day for the most part. And, you know, and then I go into saying, well, so how many of you just can't wait till the next time you brush your teeth? You are so excited. And, in fact, you take a lot of selfies and you post it on Facebook and you're like, look at this beautiful new toothpaste I just bought. <laughs> Think about food and exercise and all the selfies, you know, food porn, right? Crazy mm -hmm. food. And the selfies with exercise and look at my flat abs. It, it's so warm. So let's take it back to the tooth, brushing your teeth level. That's not something we share. We both we look forward to. We're really excited about. But we do it every day, no matter what. It has become a healthy habit. Even on those days when we may eat cotton candy, we don't say, well, I'm not going to brush my teeth. I already ate cotton candy. Quite the contrary. you know. So, so, for example, one of my healthy tips is drinking water all day long. Now, just because you're you know, having a bad, uh, unhealthy day, whether it's stress or you're on vacation, polluting your body, you don't stop drinking water. You keep drinking water. So this is an example of how doing certain things every day becomes a habit. And that is probably the greatest story is when I hear people say they're doing these five tips every day, and that leads to more great things in their health. For for the the busy people that are listening to this um, episode and and saying, come on, Jen and Todd, let's let's get let's get to the tips because I've got things to do. <laughs> what what would what would be some tips? What can people do? What can people do today that would just start improving their health today? Uh, great question. Start improving your health today. I'm going to tell you real quickly what my five healthy eating tips are and we go in, I go into much more detail at lunch and learns and presentations on each one of these topics. Mm -hmm. Healthy choices, make healthy choices. That is something you can do every day. It's not all or nothing. In other words, when you have choices, and like I said, I can go into more detail at another time, pick the healthier choice. Don't deprive yourself. Mm -hmm. Five or six times a day. 
I mean, there's some controversy out there about that, but for the normal average working class person who is busy and not in a competitive sport or anything like that, eat a few times a day so you don't get hungry and you keep your metabolism stoked. And by the way, have vegetables and protein in every one of those little snacks and meals. Hmm. Third tip, drink water all day long. Again, I don't like water. I can't drink that much water. Guess what? Think of water like medicine. If you want a tip, drink a glass of water before every meal and you'll get your water intake from a minimum. And then I have a couple of other tips. One's about the timing of what you eat can make a big difference on your weight gain or loss program. And the variety in what you eat is super important for our overall health. So these are things, as you can tell, anyone, you know, being healthy can mean different things to different people. So no matter where you are, what age, you know, how extreme you want to be, these are the things as we discuss them more in Lunch and Learns and presentations and in my booklets and tools that everyone can do every day. Love it. I'm just curious, Jenna. I've done a fair share of research into health and wellness, and I think we all know how important um, personal motivation is to finding success in a health endeavor, so whether it be getting healthier, whether it be losing weight, whatever it may be. In your opinion, how important is it to have support when you're, when you're you know, going down that, that new health path? You know, I think it's it's important, but not necessary. It's not critical. And, and here's why I say that. I think it is very important for you to not be around people who are trying to derail your choice to be healthy. Okay, you want to be around people who support that and don't try to get in the way of it. But at the same time, I think what some people unfortunately expect is I want my spouse or my best friend to eat the same way I'm going to eat. Otherwise, they're not supporting me. Well, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> because, again, it's your choice, and that is wonderful. What you can do, though, to garner more support is to bring some of these materials, and that's why I like to do a lot of things. You know, everything's very digital today, which is great, but there's something about when you have a booklet or a magnet or a book or a checklist that you put up on the refrigerator at home and your desk at work, it helps people see these things. And like I said, you would be amazed when you're setting an example by doing it yourself, those around you at work, at home, your friends, your circles, they may, they may start to eventually ask questions and want to see how you're doing what you're doing, especially when they see the, you know, the results you're getting or just how much more your skin glows or how much better you're sleeping at night, you know, whatever the case may be. Sure, sure, sure. Fascinating stuff. Jen, it's a, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. If listeners want to learn um, more about you, you have a few books now, right? Um, where can they find you? Yes. Um, so uh, my website's probably the easiest catch-all place, and that's www.jenamore.com, J-E-N-A-M-O-R-E. Kind of funny side note about that, Todd. Um as you know, people have a hard time pronouncing and spelling and Googling my last <laughs> name. So, so for the business, uh, we just thought it would be a lot easier if people could get Amore a lot easier. So that's my website, jenamore.com. Um, you know, what you can do if you want to hear more, see more, you will individually or get your organization, your foundation, your business, you know, whoever, whatever you're a part of. Um, to look me up, look at my services and products. They're all available all over the country. I go, I go everywhere, including Canada. Uh, you know, get me in as a guest uh, speaker, or you can subscribe to my newsletter. Get buy some of my uh, written materials and checklists. Lots of tools there for people, no matter what size the group may be. Fantastic! Love those tips, and, and thanks for joining us on the show today. Oh, my pleasure, Todd. Take care. Bye-bye. Would you like to be featured as a guest on Great Work Insights? If yes, we want to hear from you. Leave us a comment with who you are and what you're all about at www.octanner.com. Also, remember to rate, review, and subscribe to all our podcasts on iTunes. Now get out there and build something beautiful. It's your turn now.